Hi, my name is uh, Andre Savu, and uh, today I'm going to talk about the Moog Modular Synthesizer. Uh, I'm not going to be able to go too much in detail because this is my second try, uh, try on doing this oral presentation, and the first one took 15 minutes. So I'm going to try to do this in 5 minutes. I realized that I don't have enough time to go exactly into detail. So we're going to start. I'm going to go through the history and through the technical aspect of the synthesizer. So, uh, it was uh, invented by Robert Archer Moog, who was born in New York City in 1934. He recently died in 2005 due to a brain tumor. Um, so basically he was the creator of the Moog Modular Synthesizer. He got a Bachelor in Physics, a Bachelor in Electrical Engineering, and also a PhD in Engineering Physics. So right there he had enough uh, knowledge to pursue his goals. So at 19 years old, he started his uh, own company called R.A. Moog Company uh, that was putting together Terramin kits. And uh, he was going like that for a while and uh, more or less 10 years later, he started working on the modul modular synthesizer with an American composer called Hebert Dutch. So together they, uh, they create the, the, the basic modules of the synthesizer, which I'm going to explain right now. So, after doing some research uh, and uh, reading the Arturia, Arturia Moog Modular Manual, uh, this is a virtual plugin, but it explains uh, very well how the analog plugin works too. So, after uh, reading the manual, I realized that it's not that complicated how I thought. And uh, basically, there's four sections in the, in the, in the synthesizers. In the synthesizer, uh, there's the programming section, uh, where it's the most important section and the more uh, the most uh, complex. Uh, this is the section where the sound sound itself is built. Uh, then there's the section that contains uh, the effects and the sequencer, and uh, there's the section that uh, contains the external cables, outputs, and inputs, and uh, the keyboard section. Now, the first, the programming section, it contains nine oscillators, um, two low frequencies oscillators, LFOs, three filters, six envelopes dedicated to modulations, two envelopes dedicated to output amplifiers, a dual trigger, a trigger, trigger delay, a noise generator, uh, noise generator, one ring modulator, four envelope followers, two sample and holds, one frequency translator, one form and filter, and a set of amplifier that can be grouped to form mixers. Now at the beginning we find the VCOs, the voltage controlled oscillators. This is the first part of the synthesizer and uh, basically that part uh, gives us uh, electronical, uh, ele electrical pitched so sound, a signal, a signal, and uh, we have the, the choice between uh, sine wave, uh, square wave, a triangle, and sawtooth wave, and we cannot, because there is nine oscillators, we can form a lot of combinations, and uh, each one of these waves has different, uh, different um, uh, characteristics, uh, harmonics. That's it. Uh, so uh, we can form uh, different combinations and then can be directed to the voltage controlled filter. There's uh, three of them and there's four options each. Uh, we can use between a low pass filter, a high pass filter, a band pass filter, and a multi mode filter. So right there we see that we have enough enough options already. We can create a combination of oscillators and then put, put them through uh, filters take some frequencies off and right there we can create uh, the sound that we need but obviously there's more to that so <clears throat> there's a uh, next there's the modulation envelope that controls the attack delay sustain and release of the modulation and the VCA it's another thing Voltage control amplifiers controls the attack, decay, sustain, and release of the sound, so the volume of the sound through time. So, this is uh, pretty good. I mean, uh, 
the VCA is responsible to create, let's say, a quick attack or a slow attack like the violin and a long release like the piano. Uh, it's very effective and useful. Then uh, there is the LFO, the low frequency oscillators, uh, that is responsible to, to give us a vibrato, vibrato effect and tremolo effect. Very useful too. Um, there is a control amplifier or mixer to, to mix together the different uh, uh, sound sources that we have to, to, really, uh, to put the volume up or volume down or certain and you know to get exactly the sound that we want. Uh, so uh, after there is also a trigger delay and it just delays the sound. There is a noise generator that generates noise and uh, it can choose between white noise or pink noise and can also be controlled with high pass and low, low pass filters so it's very useful if you want to create a more dirty kind of sound it's very nice uh, there's the sample and hold module and basically uh, as I know this is uh, responsible for sampling the input sound and can also uh, add a glide effect to the output uh, the ring modulator, uh, based on the manual that I read, multiplies two signals to create non-harmonic frequencies. So uh, this can uh, be used to create uh, metallic kind of sounds or bell-like bell sounds. Um, there's a Foreman filter. It's another way to increase or decrease frequencies in the sound. And uh, last but not least, the mode frequency shifter shifts the frequency chosen. Now I'm not able to go too much in details because I don't have enough time. But this is the first section, the programming section, the most important one because it gives us the nature of the sound. And the second section right now contains uh, the effects that we can put to the sound uh, like a uh, equalizer, a chorus, a phaser, a stereo delay and a sequencer. So this is very useful because it's in the plugging, it's in the, the modular synthesizer and you don't have to go through another module to create uh, the, the, to put the effects that you want. So there's a sequencer in there too. I'm not going to go through the, the effects, everyone knows the effects, but the sequencer uh, basically uh, is responsible to, to give us an arpeggio effect. We can t change the pitch of the notes in the sequencer. The third section is all uh, the inputs and outputs of the sequencer. You can create a loop with that, that's the, the smallest section of the synth. The fourth section is where you find uh, the piano and uh, the keyboard. And you can choose from uh, polyphonic, uh, poly polyphonic to uh, or monophonic, uh, retrigger mode or legato. And uh, that's about it. We went quickly through the fourth section of the modular synthesizer. Um, so like I said, this was based on the Arturia uh, Moog Modular Virtual Plugin Manual. So the reason why it's uh, legit, it's because it was approved personally by Robert A. Moog. And uh, he denied a lot of uh, companies that try to emulate his uh, modular, in, uh, modular synth in the virtual plugins. That's why uh, this Arturia is legit. And um, that's about it. Robert A. Moog, he's a pioneer. He deserves a legacy. He's responsible. His sound is uh, behind a lot, a lot of uh, hit records uh, and a lot of a uh, couple generations. Uh, and uh, that's it. What more can I say? I personally uh, went, personally went in the studio at Concordia, played around with uh, Moog Modular. Uh, it's not a move, but it's a modular synthesizer. I played around. I got I got it to work. I, uh, I com combined a couple of oscillators, put them uh, through a low frequency oscillator, added some uh, some noise, and uh, that's it. I didn't go too much, and uh, I didn't use all the effects, but at least I got the basics. And that's about it. This was very helpful for me because now I can go in any virtual plugin synthesizer in my uh, studio and uh, get exactly the sound that I want. So that's it. I know it's, uh, it's uh, over five minutes, but thank you for listening and uh, have a nice day.